You just said me. it gets you. What do you mean? Yeah, it just when I watch it, it just stirs me inside. Uh, what what, what do my you emotions mean? going? I can't watch it again. Really? Yeah, it really churns on me. It just eats me up because there are people that were in there that really made it unnecessarily hard because it could have been such a fantastic show and some people just on the rules I don't want to say bad of anyone so I'm going to leave it there all right let's leave it there yeah as I was getting to know you yeah I mean, not known you yeah today yeah I was really interested in what you were talking about in terms of being a father okay cool and I'm a dad yeah. and I think dads need coaching and now you've got a grand, you, you're a granddad, so I want a bit of coaching myself. I want other dads to get a bit of coaching. Mm -hmm. And the thing that struck me was that you said you can... This is real, by the way. Yeah, it is real booze. <laughs> Woohoo! You said that you can be um, your child's friend, but you have to be its parent oh. first. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right? I now, I was always said you're, you can't be your kid's friend. You've got to be their parent. So talk me through what you think. The, the other thing you said, which I thought was brilliant, was when someone said, you know, how do you parent? You went, you know when you've done something wrong. So just talk me through. Give, give, give me some advice with your wisdom on how to be a better dad. <sighs> but do you know what it is? I think for myself personally, I remember what it was like when I was a kid. And I've always hung on to that. And um, I know the relationship that I had with my dad it was up and down. It was, you know, my dad was a typical man of his time. But the good thing about what we had was it was a great lesson in how not to be. I didn't want to be like my dad. I didn't want to be that kind of a parent because he was your typical, you know, come home, chuck the money on the table. My mum had to deal with whatever he, he, she was given. And then he'd be off to the bookies. I can remember going in the bookies to pick him up to go and get him. But anyway, the thing is, it, it showed me that I didn't want to be that kind of a parent. I wanted to be involved. I wanted to be in my kids' lives. And um, it's about setting boundaries and, and, and sticking to them. And I think the mistake a lot of people make as parents is, is to tell their, their children, don't do this, and then the children do it, and then they set a new boundary. I said, don't do that, or... And then the children still do it. And then they set a new boundary. Straight away, you're telling your children that my word means nothing. Right, now, here's an example. Please don't take me literally. But let's say, for example, it slipped out. You do that again, I'm going to poke you in the eye. Now, you shouldn't have said it. But now the fact that you have said it, you've got to stand by it. So if your child does something, one good poke in the eye. Now, again, I say... You shouldn't have said that, and that's not something <laughs> I'm saying that people should do. But all I'm trying to say is that you need to stand by your word. Make what you say real. Is masculinity toxic? Masculinity? Yeah. No, masculinity. <sighs> See, masculinity being toxic. I'm a man, and I'm a typical male, so... I'm not going to say masculinity. No, it's not toxic. No. But do you know what I mean? I have had experiences with my kids. It's like this. I, unfortunately, I'm lucky enough now to be able to go like this with most of them. <laughs> and that's enough, right? Sometimes. Okay. There's no... I, I, I'm not awarding myself parent of the year. I'm not. <laughs> um, but is there, is there something, you know, is there... Uh, my view is that we need really good, strong masculine and feminine role models in this world. Agreed. That are diverse and they're not the same, and that will help children to flourish. Right. Do you agree? Do you? I I agree with that hundred percent. We need a bit of hard and soft. Yeah. Whether or not it comes from opposite parents, it doesn't matter. But we need children need a bit of hard, a bit of loving, and a bit of uh, sorry, a bit of hard. You know, a bit of, yeah, and a bit of soft, a bit of loving. Yeah. And uh, I don't think um, children today are getting that. I think what children today get. It's too much soft, my youngest included. Oh, she doesn't want nothing. Really? <laughs> well, it's hard, though, because everything around them is very soft. Yeah. So they're not used to being confronted over yeah. issues that, that we, would, we would confront them over. OK, so as we move forward, and, you know, you're, you're, you're going to become the, the wise, even wiser, more uh, senior gentleman in this world, what are you going to say to your great-grandkids? Get off the iPhone. <laughs> Do you know, it, it actually feels, it feels, for myself, it feels easier with my grandkids. Is it? 
maybe it's because my children were the learning curve. Yeah. And now, you know, I've ironed out all the wrinkles. So anything I may have done wrong there, I've put right here. Because I've got a great relationship with my, my grandkids. So um, I've got a great relationship with my kids. Good for you. I work with my son. My son and I work together. Okay. I'm so upset that we have to wrap this, but your cab was late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> right. Thank you. Carpenter and now TV star, Raphael Mead.